last video, you saw that the center link was bad. But we're going to take a closer look at some methods of determining if uh, a link end, a ball type link end, is bad. And we're going to go ahead and replace the center link in idler arm. When I'm checking the front end links, I'm going to have an assistant do short strokes at the wheel back and forth to look for play. The first method is actually uh, just looking at it. Here we're looking at the knuckle and a rod end, and you can see they're moving in tandem. There's the Pittman arm and the center link. You can see just a little bit of play in there. Here's the center link and idler arm, and also a little bit of play there. Something new I recently learned is you can actually feel a bad joint. If you put your fingers on there, I can actually feel the vibrations going on. Unlike uh, sand this rod and it's still tight. Here I have what's called a mechanic stethoscope. It has many uses, and I'm actually going to go ahead and see if I can hear the bad joint in the steering. Okay, I start shaking it. I can totally hear the sloppy joint in the center link. And if I move to the tie rod and it's so tight, I can actually hear it echoing from that joint, but much softer. And we go way to the outside, you can barely hear anything. So here's my new center link. Uh, this is actually an Auto Extra center link, purchased for $45. To my amazement, Moog didn't even make a center link for the car. And the only other one I was able to find was a Rare Parts center link for $240. Interesting enough, uh, this center link is painted and all the Moog parts are not painted. So keeping true to myself, I went ahead and painted up the uh, idler arm. Anything that goes on the Firebird gets painted. One other note on this Firebird is that the center link is actually different than a second generation Camaro center link. A little surprise on that one as well. So here I'm going to remove the, uh, the tie rod ends from the center link. I'm taking out the cotter pins and now I'll remove the castellated nut. Might as well use this fancy tool kit I got here. This looks good. In care of my tools, I always try to oil up the threads before I press. I'm actually not going to replace the uh, tire ends at this point. That's something I'll do uh, just before the alignment. All right, we'll see what it takes to go ahead and uh, separate this. Got my safety glasses on. violent when it separates. Tie right in number two. Here I actually had to grab a different press out of the kit and I ended up having to put a castellated nut on the stud. You can see it's loose in there because I couldn't quite get this tool on far enough for a square press. And I'm just going to wing it here and, uh, and see what happens. Really quite a bit of strain on there. Oh, there we go. She broke free. See it's loose now. So here's my idler arm still connected to the center link. I'm going to go ahead and take these two uh, nuts off these studs or possibly through bolts and take the idler arm and center link out as one unit. So here's the idler arm still connected to the center link. You can see there's a ton of play in there. It isn't terrible bad but bad enough that uh, I want it replaced. And here's the, the new center link. You can see there's no play in there. It'll eventually wear in a little bit, you know, it'll be a little looser than this, but not as bad as what I have. And uh, it's going to be nice and tight for the upcoming alignment. Here's a cool little disc that was in the bottom of the idler arm. Never quite seen one like that before. 
I doubt if the idler arm's original, but uh, you never know. Here's the idler arm. You can see the bend in it. With the frame rails can be here with the back of the car back there. I actually installed one of these backwards once. So you always want to take note on how you took that apart. Ran across a hardship here. At a glance, our new center link looked uh, the same. But on closer inspection, you can see the uh, left side has a jog up. And the right side actually has a bend in it. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board on getting a center link for this car. So here I am a week and a half later with the uh, correct center link. The top one actually is the Camaro center link. You can uh, see the difference there. The second one is a rare part center link. And I could only find that or a Hotchkiss one. And the bottom one is the original. And it looks like the Moog idler arm matches up pretty good. Interesting thing about that original idler arm, or the, at least the idler arm that was on there, is uh, it's a two-piece. You can see the uh, castle nut on it, and you could separate that if you wanted to for whatever reason. Here's a look at the front end after uh, we got these new pieces installed. And it is wicked tight now. Looking forward to the alignment.